Hello everybody, my name is Adam Gordon. I'm an IT Pro TV edutainer, and I'm gonna be your host for this series. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at how to set up meetings using Teams. Join me here if you will, we're gonna take a look at the Teams app. We've already got it up and running. And on our navigation area, I've chosen the calendar, which is an area that you may or may not be familiar with. We don't often think of using Teams to manage our calendaring, our meeting, and our necessary communication around that. Most of us are probably trained and very familiar with using Outlook, and as a result, we tend to fall back on that. Now, in another episode in this series, I'm gonna show you a trick with Outlook, because believe it or not, we can actually set our meetings in Outlook and specify that we actually want them to be team meetings. And if you're not familiar with how to do that, I'll show you how to do that in another episode. But for now, we're gonna focus on setting meetings from within Teams itself. And it's very easy. We go ahead and we choose our calendar. We could see my calendar is laid out with my work week, so Monday at the start through Friday, right? And we could see what the date is and the month and all of that, standard calendar stuff. And I'm gonna scroll over to the right-hand side of the calendar we see two buttons that are very interesting to us and an entry in the calendar that has another interesting option for us. Let's start with our meet now button. If I wanna spin a meeting up right away, something's just come up, I don't have time to schedule it, I've just gotta get everybody together. I can meet right now by clicking on that button, I become the meeting owner and the initial participant, and then I have a list of people I can invite and I simply reach out to them from within the meeting. I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. I can spin up a brand new meeting by scheduling it and by clicking new meeting, I create a calendar entry like the one that's right down here called sample meeting four. And once I've done that and invite at least one person to the meeting, the calendar entry becomes active and it has a button like the one you see there for join that allows myself and any participants that I invite to simply click on that button and at the right time when the meeting is scheduled to take place to join the meeting actively, which is again, really cool time saving and a great capability. So let's take a look at how both work. Let's start with meet now. I'm gonna zoom out just so you can see that I'm about to click on that. We begin our meeting experience by having our meeting window open. It says meet with, and you could change the name. That's just me. That is my icon, and it says join now. Nowhere on this screen, let me zoom in, nowhere on the screen do I add users. That happens after I join the meeting. So let me zoom out. I can go ahead, click join now. It's gonna connect in. No microphone, that's fine. I'm on my virtual machine. I don't have a microphone enabled, no big deal. I can see my people, what we call our people picker list right over here. And this is where I can start inviting people. I'm the organizer. I want to invite somebody either by phone number or by dial, or rather uh, by name or by dialing a number, either way. So let me go ahead and let me pull somebody up out of my list here. And you'll notice it is trying to call that person. They're unavailable because Wes is not actively involved in this episode, but I could easily start reaching out to my team members if they're expecting that we're gonna have a meeting on the fly, get them in and make them part of the meeting. And once I've got everybody, I then can go ahead and I can share my screen. I can activate a camera, unmute. I can go ahead and put up a chat area, see a list of participants. And I also, as you can see, can go in and go full screen, turn on live captioning if you have that available. I can record, I can do all sorts of stuff associated with my meetings. Lots of capabilities in here. And when I am done, I can go ahead and I can hang up, exiting the meeting, coming back into Teams. But notice that I now have a record of that meeting having happened as a recent entry in our chat area, and I have information about the meeting, how long it was, et cetera, who participated. If I wanna spin it back up again, I could join back into it if I get disconnected or something like that. And I can also view and add participants right from here in real time. All of that, can happen just by spinning up a meeting on demand using the Meeting Now button. Let's go back to our calendar. That was our Meet Now button. What about creating a new meeting right over here, right next to it? Now I use this button to create this meeting entry on our calendar, but let's see how I did that. When I click New Meeting, I get a form I have to fill out. If you're familiar with Outlook, this should look suspiciously similar to you. It's almost identical in terms of how we set up a meeting and a calendar event there. I have to give it a name. Let's call this Test Meeting for 
number five or whatever you want to call it. And it would help if I actually could spell correctly while I was typing. And then I can add attendees, required and or optional as you can see. Let's make Cherokee Jones a required attendee. Let's click optional. That opens a secondary area, almost like a BCC line in an email. And let's make Wes our optional attendee for this one. I stack those users up just by continuing to add them. You manipulate the day and time settings here as needed. You go ahead and specify whether the meeting does repeat and if so, on what kind of cadence. You add a channel here if you want to that this is part of. I'll put that into this channel right here for this team. You can add a location as well. And then down here, let me zoom out so you can see this and scroll so you can see the bottom here. I can type in details for this meeting, maybe an agenda of some kind. You get the idea, right? And then when I am done, I will come up here and I will click send. And what this does is it puts it out on the calendar. It is actively doing that right now, instantiating it, setting it up, sending it out to the people involved. And once that's set, it will be there. And then I will be able to see it set up and I'll be able to see that it has a join button. Now, while we're waiting on that because it's trying to reach everybody, let's go into one that is already set and ready to go. Just zoom back out here. This is the first one that I had. I've already set it up. I have my join button available right there, but I wanted to show you what happens at the bottom of the text area where I entered my information. The minute you set the meeting and invite at least one person, we get this text added, and this is added by Microsoft automatically. You don't have to worry about it, but we have a link that allows anybody who gets this to join the meeting by clicking the phone number that will be used based on where I am. I'm in Gainesville in our studios. That number will look different for you. I have a conference ID that's a unique identifier for the conference, and I have links to local numbers, resetting the pin, things like that that users may need. That's all inserted by Teams for us automatically. When I click join, same idea, just like we saw, I join that meeting, and then I go ahead and I wait for people to appear, and then I can start the meeting. Again, no microphone, no big deal, but I don't have to necessarily invite people because as you can see, I've already set them up in the meeting request and Wes is already listed as opposed to a meet now on demand where I have to add them through the people picker and I'm waiting. He's not gonna join by the way, in case you're wondering, but I am waiting in theory for the meeting to start up. So that's how we could use a pre-scheduled meeting and we can go ahead and leverage that from our calendar, same outcome. We see the meeting is recorded there as an event that occurred and that I have the capability to be able to go in and interact with it if necessary. Now, the one that I just set up is right down here and you can see that I can click on that and I can see the list of people and everything is there, everything is good. I can scroll all the way to the bottom and sure enough, there's my join Microsoft Teams meeting link inserted into that window once I've scheduled the meeting and invited at least one person. If you set a meeting request up, but don't invite anybody, right? Then remember, you can always go back and add them after the fact. So that's really not an issue. All right, so that is how we go in and we can use the calendar function within Teams to set up meetings. Remember, I'm gonna come back with a separate episode and show you how to create meetings in the more traditional way in Outlook to use a special added capability and turn them into team meetings. That's gonna be a cool episode. You don't wanna miss that one. But until then, happy teaming. Check out the playlist for more Microsoft Teams tips and be sure to subscribe to the IT Pro TV channel. I'm Adam Gordon and thanks for watching.